to me who couldn't, couldn't come because she is working in the university also as a, one of my students and uh, we worked together so we thought that we should make this venture but unfortunately exam time is now so he couldn't come. Uh, so you know he has made an explanation of what is anthropology, we are basically anthropologists and he also has given some example of the cultural resources both uh, tangible and intangible. He has also given this been a sort of introduction that I have uh, said about the cultural resource management that was introduced by archaeologists uh, and it was parallel to natural resource management and primary objective was to preserve tangible cultural heritage including historic properties, older properties, museum collection, sites, etc. And cultural resource management has risen up as an endeavor by the Asiatic Society and its founder, uh, Sir William Jones, 1784. And then uh, the name of Alexander Cunningham, also a British administrator, is very important because he has done a lot of work uh, for reviving the heritages in India. And Robert Bruce Foote is also to be mentioned because he also was a geo geologist but he was the person who for the first time discovered prehistoric tool from India. So uh, now the archaeological remains are there, uh, legality is there, but what happens? Uh, there are many uh, threats and uh, these are firstly natural events of course, activities of plants, earthquake, flood, but there are also human actions and uh, these are incidental, uh, some are incidental, some are intentional and uh, incidental are housing, cultivation. Of course we have law for if there is any kind of archaeological remain found in a foundation of a uh, uh, building or construction or mining or whatever they have to uh, tell that, inform that to the government of the archaeological survey of India but not that always it happens and so that's uh, gives uh, destroys the thing and there are of course intentional ones are also there. Archaeological Survey of India is a big survey which has goes back as uh, far as 1810 and it has grown up and there are a much more institutional uh, areas for preservation and these are um, different law starting from 1817 and to last uh, that revision was done at 2010. And uh, then uh, after independence, there are many more changes that have been done and ratification of the law has been done. So this is one of the sites that we have discovered, where, which is very important because this has shown for the first time that in the uh, eastern part of India, it was not uh, bronze, but it was brass. So because zinc is uh, more uh, easily available in this part rather than tin. And so brass, also the brass industry is much more developed and it has got its link with the Southeast Asia where as you know uh, much work had been done on the brass and brass is a very ancient alloy that has been found in this area. And uh, actually uh, though these kinds of uh, ornaments had grown up and found but the basic tool types were still stone. So we have another uh, important aspect uh, in the cultural um, proceedings where we call it charcolithic, meaning both copper and lithic that had went on because you know um, metallurgy uh, was a kind of knowledge which was very quite expensive and also people who knew it they kept it secret, secret. so common people had to use <coughs> more of the cheap materials in the form of stones. So these are uh, some of the factors that are eroding out, though we have all the legislations. These are the erosions which are uh, carrying out away the um, tools, as you see the cultural prehistoric tools are washed down. And so it, is very, it becomes very difficult to find their actual association. And there are also people who walk around and bring in devastation, building of dams and other things. These are also uh, bringing in a lot of changes in that. So there are another site that he has uh, taken up where also we get all these kinds of 
variations that are found. And these are the types of uh, these uh, destructions that are being done because of querying activities for stones, querying activities that are going on in different parts, and uh, denudation also is bringing out the bringing about the soil erosion, and thus uh, there are also cultivations where the trees are cut down, the plant the land is uh, prepared for plant, and many of the archaeological findings are thrown away. Uh, this is similar kind of uh, activity that had um, brought in ravages to the site. This is another site in Bengal and in, uh, where I come from, and that is a flat land, very much similar to Amsterdam, I would say, mm -hmm. because the city Calcutta is also below zero uh, sea level. So now uh, we have uh, this kind of land where these uh, embankments are there. But even then, so these are the natural destructions that are being done about. So this is another part where also, you see this is a historical site where one of the Buddhist monasteries were there. This has been dug up by the excavated, actually excavated by the um, Archaeological Survey of India, but there is no proper preservation here. So people are going down, walking down, uh, through the they have um, made a you can see a road through this monument and thus the preservation is lost. Then similarly vehicles are going around, uh, cows are uh, grazing, lots of uh, garbages are thrown, people are in picnic and things like that. There are some local preservations, so some of the local people who are very interested in the cultural heritages, they just have from their form, their private museum. You see, it's a home, someone's home, and he has. Uh, they have made a kind of private uh, museum. Maybe in this way, they have preserved some of the things that have come up from the archaeological site, but not much knowledge with the date and the stratum and such other thing. So the problems that are identified are. Uh, um, government has mainly given archaeological remains of historical period are more emphasized upon. There are limitations of fund. Most of the prehistoric sites are not easily accessible. Conservation work, conservation work is time consuming and lack of awareness among the local people. So uh, there should be an alternative thinking uh, by way of public archaeology where people should be, local people should be uh, consider taking uh, given uh, awareness uh, of their own heritage so that they should uh, preserve them for their own culture. The major, she has given some measures which are to be taken into consideration, that is public involvement, then awareness through schooling system, awareness camp in surrounding areas of a site, media forecasting, then multidisciplinary involvement. Thank you very much. Thank you.